I did something real stupid. Hey guys, it's Chris, and welcome back. What did I do? Well, number one, my Amiga, believe it or not, caught a virus. I posted about it on the Commodore Facebook group, the Commodore Amiga Facebook group, the Amiga.org Facebook group, and a couple other places. I don't know how I got it, uh, but it's better now. So then I, uh, I got myself a uh, new uh, mouse from Amiga Kit. Matthew, thank you. Um, and it's got a metal shrouded plastic type of uh, connector. And I was a dummy because, you know, when we're living in modern computer age, you want something, you plug it in. So I had this, uh, you know, regular Amiga mouse. So I unplugged, the machine was running, I unplugged it. I plugged this one in. And a little tiny spark went. I'm like, oh, that's weird. And the light went out. There is a small green Pico fuse on the board. I'm 90% sure I popped that fuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it does. I'm going to plug in the uh, regular mouse here. So we're booted and there's no mouse but I have a left and a right click I can still click and if you don't know you can hold down the left Amiga key and use the arrows to select things so for RAM disk I can still open RAM I just can't close it. I have to use the keyboard and kind of get over here and if you needed a mouse click you don't even need a mouse to use an Amiga you can do the left alt and the left Amiga key would close the right alt and the right Amiga key are your right select. I'm going to power this down and what we're going to do in fast forward land here is we're going to tear this down in my room. I've been working on so much stuff between the virus and doing other compact flash cards and retro writing and getting 500 hard drives to work on various Things I have neglected cleaning this joint up. Here, but right here, F1. So, here is your joystick port. It's the rightmost port. Here is your left port. Now, my joystick port still works fine. But right here is F1 and that is a 100 milliamp 4 volt Pico fuse. And there's another capacitor and another what looks like a resistor or something towards the end. But that is our puppy that has popped. Now I could reinsert the power supply and measure voltage across and look for a 5 volt but I already know that's going to be it so let's get busy at taking the board down. So here's the board in its glory, recapped, new axials, everything is fine. Uh, to get the case off, we have to remove this, pop these out ever so carefully, and then you can lift up. There is a plastic membrane underneath of here to protect the metal. Don't lose that. There's also, on the bottom of the board, several plastic round ends, one here and there's another one up here somewhere. So what we're looking for is F1, one right here, so we're going to be removing this. So let me get the soldering station fired up. This leftmost pin right here, one and two. So we're just going to debraid them. I'm going to try and zoom in as tight as I can while still giving you some, Let's see what I can doing. I'm just going to use braiding and all I'm doing is touching the wick on the solder until I see the solder 
fill the wick. pulls the hole clean. Just make sure we can get it out. If you can't, you can always touch it because it might have some residual solder around the end. I need some new pliers. One. Two. There's your guilty party. Ah, uh, what does this say? Damaged part. We're going to grab a replacement from the many. You can clearly see our F1 has been emptied. F1 is now empty. And the holes look clean and I didn't damage them. So I'm just going to bend the legs of the replacement fuse and put it through the hole. Line it up as it hangs off the table into position. You can use the legs to pull it in. Here's our replacement fuse. Some Kester 186 no clean flux to place around the part just so we have a nice solderable surface. We're then going to use silver solder with lead and we're going to go in and solder in the new piece. The smoke is from flux. When you're done with your repair, you can then clip off the legs. Trim this up a little better. The replacement part is now in. Here's our replacement part. The solder went all the way through. So we're ready for reassembly. Here's our clean up the flux. Cool. Now, it's time for reassembly. We're going to reinsert the board into the rear pins first. And then ever so gently into the front pins. This has been out so many times, this front is really beat up. The Amiga is going to be started up in this configuration. So just so you know, there are five uh, Pico fuses in the Amiga. F1 is here in the front near the uh, mouse port to the left of the, in between the keyboard connector and the mouse port. This is the rear of the board, of course. And then we have F2, which is here near the serial port and the capacitor C137. Then F3 and F4 are just north of the even and odd CIAs facing the rear of the board. And finally, F5 is in between the disk drive port and the RGB. So, I'm sorry, the printer port and the RGB video. And that is all of your Pico fuses. Now, yes, I should go through and replace them all because I've heard you can have some weird crap issues with things if they're blown. And I'm going to replace them as I come across the issues. Why is that freaking out? I have a weird uh, burp 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 DF1. Okay. I got a mouse again. Yay. Right click, left click. I had a, something in, uh, I had the scroll thing in Workbench Startup that was screwing me up. Uh, what's it called? Uh, crap. Uh, freewheel. This turd keeps uh bye bye freewheel. DF1's just unplugged. So we're gonna run the advanced Amiga analyzer. Analyzer. So this will tell me my ports are working fine. Left and right fire. You can't see that because this stupid cable's in the way. Left and right fire. Up, down, left, right. So at least the uh Denise isn't toast. Old Sega Master System joystick here, which I will hook up into the joystick port, which is the right port. 
and we can see I got my 5 volt up, down, left, right, fire 1, fire 2. I can move its diagonals and diagonal down, up, down. So that works too. But anyway, that's how you replace a Pico fuse if you uh, have an issue with the mouse and it just stops moving left or right. You could have accidentally popped it or ground it out. Uh, you know, pin number seven to pin eight, which is the two bottoms, middles, they're the power and the ground. And that's kind of what you have to do to get back in stock. And these Pico fuses are a, a big expensive incursion at $1.99 for seven. Uh, these are 125 volt replaces number 473s. It just their work, they work fine. The Amiga mouse is working again. Got our light We're back in business, and with an optical, it's kind of neat because I can get results by running my finger over it. And I don't have to worry about sticky balls anymore, dirty balls. We don't want uh, dirty balls, so we are good to go. So that's it. We're back in business from a little uh, dollar, if that part, on a Pico Fuse F1. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps someone out there who has a similar problem uh, look for the links in the description below to that text file I was talking about with common Amiga problems and chips and stuff that goes wrong with them that you can replace yourself so here's something you do not see every day at this house and that is a case with my Amiga and my zip drive and all that stuff put together plug it back in Is in, it is blinking. Unzip this, even though it's an easy 135 cartridge. It's fine, it's all good. 95 meg screen. He's writing. The blue light is my SCSI, and of course, the orange light is the custom made one I did for the vampire. It's my copy virus extractor. So, copy. Yep. You can see the SCSI light's blue, and you'll see the other light running right there. And this might blip every once in a while. It's really not there. But anyway, here she is. Freshly uh, repaired keyboard. So we're back in action, and thank you for watching this entire long series of nightmares and headaches, and now repaired viruses and case back on the Amiga. And Repaired keyboard and repaired Pico fuses, and moving new optical mouse from Amiga Kit, and no more dirty balls. Thumbs up from me.